James Baldwin once wrote, It is true that the nature of society is to create among its citizens an illusion of safety. But it is also absolutely true that the safety is always necessary as an illusion. Artists are here to disturb the peace. They have to disturb the peace. Otherwise, chaos. But not everyone is comfortable in that space of awareness, evolution and critique. The illusion of peace and quiet is perceived as easier. However deceiving it may be. In Fahrenheit 451, Ray Bradbury affirms that a book is a loaded gun, there to disturb the peace. And Oscar Wilde echoes this sentiment, saying that the books the world calls immortal are books that show the world its own shame. In the picture of Dorian Gray. I just love that quote. Hello everyone. So, after that brief intro and reading the title of this video, I'm sure that you know that we are going to look at some of the banned books worth reading. The first book is Heather Has Two Mommies. This is the first children's book about a family unit with openly lesbian mothers ever published. And when it first hit the shelves in 1989, the homophobes came to a ban and burn it. Children's books that represent all sorts of families are important for so many reasons. Yet this was the ninth most challenged book in the 1990s. But despite the crusades of opposition, this sweet read never went out of print and is now considered a collectible. Now the second book is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Perhaps the most hotly debated and controversial book on this list is Mark Twain's classic The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. It has been challenged throughout the years for its casual and repeated use of the n-word as well as racist, classiest and gendered stereotyping on every page. As one of the leading scholars on Mark Twain, Albert Graduate, Professor Jocelyn Chadwick says, aside from the book's importance in American history and in the study of Twain, which is also critical because of the debate it engenders. She also argues that that is exactly what he was hoping to instigate with the book Conversation, Debate, Deep Analysis and Social Consciousness. And basically what this means is that Mark Twain was a satirist, so whatever he said in that book was basically a sarcastic way to put the society of that time in that book. Now the third book is Catcher in the Rye. So if you haven't read Drake Parker's favorite book yet, I suggest that you do. So this book is centering around one of the America's most beloved literary characters and is thoroughly entertaining. It opens as Caulfield drops out of prep school and we end up joining him on his venture into New York City's rich underground. So if you're sick of phoniness of our grown-up world, Caulfield will be the perfect person to commiserate with. He'll also help you to rediscover the joy and beauty in everything and it's been challenged for its blasphemy and explicit language. The fourth book is A Light in the Attic. This funny, clever, touching, creative, inspiring and lovable book of children's poems has been banned in many schools for promoting disrespect. Maybe that means that it's anti-parent or encouraging kids to stand up for themselves or making light of boring household chores. And I'm not quite sure which. So A Light in the Attic to make it to the New York Times on the bestsellers list speaks to its genius. It's conversational, fun to read and witty, making it one of those books both kids and adults can connect with and enjoy together. The fifth book is The Giver. Can you imagine a life without pain? No, not this pain. This pain. Honestly, I can't. But let me just describe this book. So, Without any inconveniences, surprises, history or at least awareness of it, it might sound like a clean slate of an existence but we see how colorless and lifeless it would really be and that these supposed negative elements of life can actually be beautiful. So this book definitely deals with the dark themes but it also teaches essential lessons about perfection, free will, courage and non-conformity and the most relevant one, the nuisance in everything. Also the way it portrays pain as a part of life is not only realistic but is also uplifting in that. It makes the readers feel less alone or less different for feeling it. Yet it's been banned and challenged in six states. I've been feeling like this for a really long time so I decided to add this book on the list. So give it a try. I think you'll really like it. Now the sixth book is Essays in Humanism. It was collected from 1931 to 1950. These essays take readers inside the mind of the great 20th century thinker Albert Einstein. But here, social and political concerns take precedence over the scientific, including Einstein's, 
rather controversial, opinions on pacifism, the United Nations, socialism and more. In perhaps the most ironic example on this list, Fahrenheit 451, a book that is literally about the dangers of censorship and burning books. And it has regularly been banned and censored since its publication in 1953, I guess. So basically what happened was that the book was deemed controversial for, for its use of profanity and because it describes the Bible being burnt. These two things still ride up some people in modern times. And I'm not judging, I'm just saying. But anyways, as recently in 2016, the Illinois Library Association reported that a school system required paternal permission for students to read the book in class. So I've heard a lot about this book. You can give it a try if you want. It sounds interesting. Now the eighth and the final book is Of Mice and Men. So this is John Steinbeck's classic tale of migrant farm workers in Central California. And it is one of the most popular books read in foreign classrooms. But it's also one of the most commonly challenged and banned books because of the slang, slurs and the profanity in the book. Many people and the whole countries have been banning the novella since at least the 1950s. In 1970s, a few cities around the United States followed the suit and then in 1984, it was the first book to be removed from the public schools in Tennessee. Hello everyone. So I hope you like this video. I wanted to read many of these books for so long, like Fahrenheit 451 and The Giver. I have great expectations from these books and I think that Fahrenheit 451 will help me to understand how information is exactly being manipulated. And as for The Giver, I think that the concept of The Giver is really, really beautiful. And besides, I'm really depressed these days. So reading The Giver, is probably one of the best things that I'll do. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Follow me on Instagram. Let me know what was your favorite part of the video or which novel I should review next or just say hi, that's fine too. And above all that, everybody have an amazing day. I'll see you all next Monday.